uh, that God has given to us for this month. And um, the series is Travel Light. That's the name of this series. If you have to travel, make sure you travel light, especially with the gas prices nowadays. Amen. We want to travel light. And uh, those who are either new with us or you haven't uh, caught the first few Sundays of the series, please go online. Everything is free. Uh, we're on Facebook and we're on YouTube. Uh, and you can watch those sermons to kind of catch up with. Next, uh, next week, uh, we'll be wrapping up the series. And uh, Brother Wilbur and Oziogu will be bringing forth the word next week. So we thank God for that. So as I wrap up my portion today, the title of my sermon today is Watch Your Weight. Watch Your Weight. Being overweight can lead to at least three different things. Number one, becoming tired, lazy, or sluggish, therefore affecting how you move, live, and function. Number two, being overweight can cause one to be prone to sickness or unnecessary pain. And number three, being overweight can lead to death. According to a quick study, I discovered that being overweight is the fifth leading risk for global death. Obesity has reached epidemic proportions. At least 2.8 million adults die each year as a result of being obese or overweight. According to the National Institute of Health, being overweight is the second leading cause of preventable death in the United States. So, while some people are dying of starvation, we have another group dying because they're eating too much. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. The visitors are like, what kind of church they come to? You, you came to a church that's going to help you, Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. It says, Therefore, since we also have such a large cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that lies before us. Uh, the contemporary English version says this, such a, lot, a large crowd of witnesses is all around us, so we must get rid of everything that slows us down, especially the sin that just we just won't let go. And we must be determined to run the race that is ahead of us, that is ahead of us. I, I want to touch on this for, for a minute. When we talk about the, the cloud of witnesses, uh, we're talking about people who have gone before us primarily. Uh, when you read the scriptures, those are not fictional characters. Those are not people who were invented and just made up so somebody could fill a book. These are people who lived and walked before us. And you have to understand that the, the Christian race for us is what we do within our lifetime. But the Christian race for the kingdom is what all believers did in all of their lifetimes. And so because just like Abraham, things were promised to them and things that, that they were called to do that they, they never completed, the baton was handed to us. And so they're not just sitting around cheering for us, eating popcorn. They're sitting around saying, y'all better finish the race. Paul is like, I didn't die for no reason. Peter's saying, I didn't die for no reason. You follow me. The prophets of old uh, who were faithful to death are not sitting around eating popcorn while we watch Netflix and eat popcorn. They're sitting around saying, look, we're a cloud of witnesses who are not just watching what you're doing, but we're a cloud of witnesses who are expecting you to fulfill some things we couldn't fulfill because the same glory that was on us is on you. The same Jesus who died for us died for you. And you know what? We didn't even have technology to do it. We didn't even have all the revelation you guys have to do it. Are you following me? So the, the witnesses are not just watching us because they have nothing else to do. They're watching us because we are finishing the race that they started when it comes to the kingdom. Are you following me? 
So that's why they're saying, look, here's what they're saying. Lay aside the weight because whether you like it or not, you're going to have to finish the race. And you're either going to finish the race heavy or finish the race light. You're either going to finish the race happy or finish the race angry, but you're going to finish the race. And so, amen, so the series is letting us know there are some things that are not optional for us. God has a purpose and a plan and a calling for each one of our lives, and either we can finish it with joy or finish it with sadness, but we're going to finish it. Samson, I believe, had a certain number of Philistines he was predestined to kill. And you know what? He fulfilled God's will, but he chose to do it with his eyes gouged out. I want to do it with my eyes still intact. Amen? You read that for yourself. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, I need somebody. Can somebody grab my water right there? I left it over there. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Amen. It wouldn't be good if pastor passed out on his birthday. Amen. We get some followers on, on social media, though, so it might be a benefit. Might, might be a benefit to us. All right. Okay, here we go. So a couple of Sundays ago, I, I used this, uh, this uh, heavy bag of, of rocks here. Oh, no, it's not heavy. So heavy bag of rocks here. Um, I used this a couple of Sundays ago for a different demonstration. And uh, so we're going to use this again. So, so today, these rocks represent extra weight. The things in our lives that constantly weigh us down. Anybody have some rocks in their life? Some things that constantly weigh you down, amen? Don't look over at your spouse. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't, don't look at your kids. Don't do it. Things like bad news. Unexpected expenses. Painful discoveries, tough decisions that you're being required to make. How about things like betrayal? What about the sudden loss of a loved one? Or any type of surprise attack or situation would fall in the category of these rocks. Some rocks you knew you were probably going to face because of your own bad decisions. Can somebody say amen? I mean, some rock's not a surprise, amen? You want to be a rock star? <laughs> but other rocks came unexpectedly, interrupting your life and disturbing your day. These rocks threatened to steal your peace, joy, and sanity. These rocks are like bad calories, Set by Satan to weigh you down. Luke chapter 21 verse 34 says this. In the New American Standard Bible. But be on your guard so that your hearts will not be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of life. And that this, this day will not come on you suddenly. Like a trap. Well, how does a person gain weight? How does a person gain weight? It's simple. The amount of calories gained is greater than the amount of calories burned. That's how you gain weight. The amount of calories you take in are more than the amount of calories that you can burn. So for today's example, gaining weight has to do with how we deal with or how we process the rocks as they come into our lives. What is metabolism? Metabolism is the rate in which you process rocks. Now, I'm, I'm going to pause for a minute because I'm a little bit of a hater. I didn't say I have a hater. I am a hater. Because some people can eat whatever they want to eat. Come on now. And they don't exercise and all them rocks are gone. Amen. Amen. Some of us, we just look at a glass of water. and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> But either way, it boils down to this. You have to burn the calories in order for you to not carry extra weight. I have a question today. A question is this. Where do you carry your weight? Where do you carry your weight? Because we all carry our weight differently. 
Now, here are five places in our lives where we could carry some extra weight. There could be more. There could be less. But today, we're going to go ahead and look at five. Here are the five. The heart, the mind, the soul, the spirit, and the body. Once again, the heart, the mind, the soul, the spirit, and the body. Let's talk about the heart for today's uh, demonstration. All right, so the heart has to do with your feelings and your emotions, your ability to love people and your ability to hate people as well. Forgiveness or unforgiveness comes from the heart. Holding a grudge and plotting out revenge comes from the heart. When you are someone who carries weight in your heart, sometimes your first response is to take rocks very hard so that you almost lose all your strength. You might cry, fall apart, go into depression. Maybe you try to ignore it or sleep it off or become numb to it altogether. And you shove that rock deep into your heart without processing it and you just leave it there. And you hope that it just goes away. Another place that we carry excess weight can be in our mind. So the mind, if you carry weight in your mind, you're the type of person that when something happens, you stop and you don't usually overreact and you say to yourself, okay, let's think this through. Like you literally say that to yourself. You do. Okay, let's, let's think this through. Let's, okay, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Who's the we? I hope it's not other spirits, but you're talking to somebody somewhere, right? And so then you begin, you begin to focus on the analytical, the logical, and you work hard to find a solution so you can come to a conclusion. This is deep. We're going to go there today. You usually start off by asking yourself questions like why and how and if and what do I need to do now or what should I do next? And you're also open to others uh, and what they have to say as long as it's what? It's logical. You look for suggestions and wisdom from certain people. But the situation becomes a rock when you can't fix it or solve it. Some of y'all getting mad right now, just the thought of, like, I couldn't fix it, couldn't solve it. So things play over and over again in your mind, disturbing you, robbing you of your peace and your sleep. And even when you almost come to a final decision, you second guess yourself. And the decision process starts all over again. And sometimes you get completely stuck and stressed out because of it. Everybody else has moved on, and you're still carrying your rock. Ten years later. Third place where you can carry extra weight is your soul. Now, understand, from my belief and understanding, your, your heart and your mind are all a part of your soul. But I differentiate uh, the soul from the heart and mind because the soul is where conclusions are made, and the soul is... Is, is, is who is going to pay for all the decisions. Because for eternity, you're going to pay for your decision. So your mind helps you come up with possible choices and possible decisions. Your heart fuels feelings and emotions about why you should make a certain decision. But at the end, if you have a sinful soul or a sinful life, you're going to make a selfish decision, even if the facts are all there. Even if the Spirit's telling you something, you have the choice to still make your decision, but you will pay the consequences of your conclusion. That's why today's sermon is a big deal, because whether you like it or not, the rocks won't stop coming. What if I get closer to God? He's just going to send more rocks. Not, not him. The, the devil will send more rocks. And if you can't learn how to process your rocks, your rocks will bury you. They will kill. But if you know how to work your rocks, those same rocks will make you stronger. So the soul, this one has to do with self, selfishness. So when a rock hits you and you struggle in the area of your soul, uh, you, you ask questions like, well, how does this affect me personally? 
You're not worried about what happened to your child or your wife, your husband or your church or your family. The first thought is, well, how are people going to think about me? You, you carry weight in your soul. How will this hinder me or slow me down? What will others think or say about me? How does this affect my reputation or my name? Does this benefit me in some way? Will it make me look good or will it make me look bad? Is this worth my time? And like, look, like if any of this stuff is yours to begin with, come on now. But the man said, I'm going to build bigger barns. God said, no, you won't. You don't even know what time your time is going to be up. But that's when the soul, when you're carrying your soul, then the emphasis is on self-preservation. The emphasis is on me. What will happen to me because of it? And what will I get out of the deal? What will I get out of the deal? Dealing with issues of the soul has to do with dealing with issues of significance. Am I significant enough? Am I being seen? Am I being heard? Am I being understood? I'll tell you some, some folk will never understand you. Can't tell you why? Because you can't even understand you. But we die for that. You must hear me. You must understand me. You must. No, no, no. He's got a gun. Leave. No, but you don't see the gun because a part of you says, I, I, I'm going to make you understand. And you can't think logically because you carry too much weight in your soul. Your reputation, things like survival, existence, comfort, ease, me, 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 pride, stubbornness, rebellion. This all lives in the soul or what we call the human will. The human will. Think about it. Because your will doesn't always make logical decisions. Your will doesn't always make emotional decisions. There's a part of you where your will is going to do what your will wants to do. And sometimes you can't even explain why your will did what it did. And sometimes there's a demonic presence or a demonic force working behind that. Conclusions and consequences happen in the soul. And that's all Satan's after. He wants you to come to the wrong conclusions so you have to live out for eternity the wrong consequences. Am I helping somebody today? Yeah. Amen. And it's, amen. And it's going to get better in Jesus' name. All right. So now the spirit. When we talk about the spirit. We're not talking about God's spirit. We're talking about the spirit of a man because a man has a spirit. The Bible says that. And in the last couple of Sundays, I have scriptures for that. Please check that out. So the spirit of a man, this has to do, this is powerful. H how do you carry rocks in your spirit? Well, this has to do with your assignment. Your spirit has to do with your assignment. Your spirit has to do, I'm going to prove it to you with scripture today. We have a great time today. Your spirit has to do with your assignment and what you were called to do by God. Because God deposits his glory and his anointing from his spirit to your spirit only for the purpose of fulfilling what he's called you to do. If you have a strong spirit, it's not so you can just go out there and do what you want to do. You have a strong spirit, maybe so like Jesus, you can go to the cross. His spirit bears witness with your spirit that you're a child of God. His spirit pours into your spirit. When you have a heavenly language, your spirit speaks to his spirit, and there's an automatic connection and exchange of strength and glory, not so you can do what you want to do. The Bible says don't lose your, use your righteousness as a cloak to fulfill things in the flesh. Quick example, some of us were shy, you know, we were scared, and God gave us boldness. Now we hand our phone numbers to everybody on the street. We use the boldness of God to fulfill a fleshly pleasure. And that's how it works. Because once the glory comes, once the anointing comes, you can use it for whatever you want to use it for. Because the Bible says the gifts are without repentance. So you need someone to teach you that if you do that, you will be held accountable one day. That's why you have crooked prophets, crooked apostles, crooked pastors, and you say, well, why is God still using them? Because they have a gift, uh, but some of them will burn in the deepest, darkest, hottest parts of hell. The Bible says in the Old Testament to the shepherds, he says, woe unto you shepherds, because I gave you the responsibility, I gave you the position, and you used it in the wrong way. 
Number one proof is Saul. When Saul turned in the Old Testament, he still got 40 years just like David did, just like Solomon did, because they had an appointed time. Are you following me? So the teaching, come on, I, I got, I'm going to do a series of sermon or book one day because some of us, we know how to fail, but we can't handle success. When did David sin? Not when he was struggling, but when he was doing real good. So we need teaching to understand how to control our flesh. Paul says, I know how to handle my flesh when I'm abased. I know how to handle my flesh when I abound. I'm the same child of God whether I have a million or I have a dollar. Are you following me? And so a mature child of God comes to that place where we're not living for natural things. We're not living for carnal things. We're not living for natural recognition. When it comes, it comes. When it doesn't, it doesn't. But your temperament is the same because you realize you are who you are, not because of what man says. You are who you are because of who God says you are. Somebody give God some praise. So the assignment... The deposit of God. So what can weigh your spirit down? Because, I mean, if you have a spirit that is pure, that is holy, that is connected to God, what can weigh your spirit down? And once again, when we get to the scriptures, I'm going to prove it to you here in the scriptures. Here we go. Other people's burdens and issues and problems, including some of your family members and even your own kids and grandkids. Even your own church can become a rock and a burden to your spirit. Even the ministry that you're doing to help others, even your great nonprofit organization. When God didn't call you or anoint you to do it, it's going to become a burden to you. And even a, doing a good thing can cause you stress. See, your spirit fails when it does not make sure that the other parts of your existence are conditioned to move with it as well because your spirit can't do anything on this earth without your flesh without your will come on now without your heart without your mind and so some of us are super spiritual but because we're not handling the other parts of our lives your spirit is connected you are seated in high places but down here you ain't getting nothing done for the kingdom and so we can't ignore any of the areas we have to learn how to process rocks in all the areas if not you can't fulfill what God has called you to do. If you want to give your money time and resources, you have a strong desire to do this, it takes work from the other parts of your existence that we talked about. The last one, number five, is the body. And the body, carrying rocks in your body, has to do with those of us who respond in our flesh without thinking, without reasoning. I just saw red. Well, you're going to jail. You're going to jail. Or without praying, you act in the flesh. All them flowers you bought your spouse because you have to always apologize for stuff you did without thinking. Going off on people is your first reaction. You get angry and mad quickly. There's always a lot of physical response. Hitting, throwing stuff, breaking stuff, walking out. Yelling, slamming doors. As a believer, this stuff should not be a part of your life. Getting quiet in here. I got the right people, got the right church right now. Amen. 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 All right. And when you carry weight in your body, that means this is where you, you place weight or weight in your, in your body, in the physical or in the flesh then you're the kind of people who sometimes run to eating or overeating when you have a stressful situation. Uh, you're prone to giving in to addictions, uh, and you run back to bad habits uh, and bad behavior, and you also run back to sin. Uh, one of the reasons why some of us struggle with addictions and habits and sin and bad behavior is because uh, there is a level of control that we find there can't control my wife right now, can't control my kids right now, can't control my boss right now. 
I can't control who was elected in the government. I don't like them. And so you know what? I can control this pornography right here. I can control these drugs right here. I know if I do this or do that, I can control what the result I'm going to get. Well, see, the lie of the enemy is when you do that, you're not going to get what you got before. You have to do more to hopefully get it. And that's how he brings you to a place of death and destruction. But a lot of people do the habitual things they do, not because they want to do them, but because they have too many rocks elsewhere. And today we're going to help you clear, clear those rocks out of the way. Come on now. Today we're going to help you clear the land so you can build. Somebody give God some praise on that right there. We're going to help you clear the land so you can build. Amen. All right, y'all ready for the scripture verses? What's our little motto here? If it's not in the word, then all we're doing is a social club. If it's in the word, that means we're having church. Amen? All right. Can I, can I say another prayer real quick? Because um, this is a, a heavy Sunday. And it's about to get a little heavier. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for, Lord God, just the beginning, the opening of what we're sharing and saying here. God, we pray that you receive glory and honor and praise. God, help us all, Lord God, not to be defensive to the pastor this morning or to the move of the spirit, but to be open and understand that you brought us here for a reason. And it wasn't just to watch some kids say five, two, one. Uh, and, and miss four and three, but Lord God, you, you, you brought us here to receive something from you in Jesus. All right, here we go. All right, so going into the word, let's talk about the heart. The heart, amen? I pray for this American education. They're skipping numbers. So the heart, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, amen. Some of y'all are laughing because you thought it was okay. You thought you could skip the numbers. Proverbs 4, 23, NIV says, above all else. Everybody say it out loud. Above all else. Say it again. So above what? Come on. What, what, is, what is all else? Ain't nothing else left, right? Above all else, stop rocks from getting into your heart. Above all else, guard your heart. No, no. He made me mad. No, you allowed him to make you. Can't nobody make you do nothing, man. Not even God will make you go to heaven or go to hell. That's your choice. Above all else, guard your own heart. For everything you do flows from it. Everything you do flows from it. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Ezekiel 36, 26, New Living Translation. These are free online, so if you can't write them all down, just go watch it later. A lot of stuff here. And I will give you a what? A new heart. And I will put a new spirit in you. And I will take, so why does he have to give you a new heart? Because your old heart is what? Too stony. Has too many what? Too many rocks. Come on now. Too many rocks. Too many rocks. <clears throat> you have a stubborn heart. <clears throat> I will give you a tender. And what kind of a heart? Resp responsive. People who have become numb because of rapes and molestations and divorces or what have you, when you become numb, what has happened is your heart has become stony. You're no longer responsive. So if a new look, when God finally sends your Boaz... You can't receive love from him because you can't receive love anymore from anyone because your love receptacle has been burned out. You're full of rocks. And so God says, I can change your stony heart into a, sto a heart of flesh, but we've got to get what? We've got to get the rocks. We've got to get the stones out. And the third verse, Matthew chapter 2, verse uh, 18, it says, in Rama, a voice was heard crying and weeping loudly. Rachel mourning for her children, and she refused to be comforted because they were dead. Now, 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 once again, I'm going deep. Go do your own Bible study on this. I just got to hit the verses and keep it moving. Amen. But here's where it gets deep. David's child died. <laughs> Three days later, God said, shut up and get up. The baby dead. Let's move on. Rachel, see, the Bible calls the Holy Spirit many things, including what? The comforter. But you know what? She refused comfort. It wasn't because he didn't provide comfort. She refused comfort because her heart was hardened. I'll tell you something. You, once somebody's heart is hardened, I don't care what you do. You have now changed to them. You're now a completely different person. And there's nothing you can do to change that. It takes God to do it. And it takes them to be willing to let the rocks go. Boom. 
mind. Let's go. Let's go quickly. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, King James Version. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So when a rock comes your way, if the rock is not of God, if the rock is not of the kingdom, if your way of thinking is not of the kingdom, you have to take those thoughts and you have to cast them down. You notice the first one doesn't say that he's the one that has to guard your heart. You got to guard your heart. And the second one doesn't say he's the one that will cast down the thoughts. You have to cast down. Why? Because it's your mind, it's your heart, it's your soul, it's your spirit, it's your will, it's your body. Take some responsibility for yourself. The Bible doesn't call the, the, the Holy Spirit the doer. It calls him the helper. He will help you do your work. He's not going to do it for you. Somebody give God some praise. Look, look, we are being simple. We are being simple and deep all at the same time. Amen. All right, here we go. Next verse, Ecclesiastes 12, 13. We're talking about the mind and the rocks that come to your mind. It says, now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the duty of all mankind. Mm -mm -mm, I'm going to prove it to you here later in Scripture. Something very deep here. But here's the point I want you to get. Ready for the point? The point is God will allow you to go back and forth for a certain amount of time. And then the gavel comes down. Okay, here's the founder. The, problem, the reason why decisions become a rock is because we don't make a decision. The we don't like conclusion. It's not, what, it's not what the humanistic teaching is. There is no absolute right. There is no absolute wrong. There is, you can be, I, I identify as a chicken today, therefore I'm a chicken. And when I leave, you're going to say, why did he cross the road? Amen? So in God, listen, we're going to find out today there is some flexibility in God. But at some point in time, you've got to make a decision. Gideon, well, I want it wet, I want it dry. Do you really want him? You, at some point, God said, enough! He allowed Gideon to go back like four or five years. Well, if it's you, Lord, do this. If it's you, Lord, paint my car. If it's you, Lord, do my nails. And God did it. And at some point, he said, enough! See, where our mind carries rocks and we wear ourselves out is because we don't want to make a decision. And we're going to learn that sometimes if you made the wrong decision, you can correct it later. But at some point, you have to make a decision. And if you don't, it becomes rocks. And they start adding up. Do I cancel my credit card? Do I not? And then we have all this stuff out there that's not in closure, the conclusion. You follow me? And they become rocks. And why is this important? Because God says, I'm calling you to do something. And you say, shh. I can't right now. I got to see if my credit card went from 3.9% to 3.95%. So your mind is too full. You can't contemplate the things of God. That's why the rocks have to go. That's why the journey is hard. That's why we say, Lord, the journey you gave me is hard. God says, no, your journey is hard. My yoke is easy. You keep adding my stuff to yours and mixing it. But you see, my spirit gives your spirit what you need to do what I called you to do. My spirit doesn't give your spirit what you need to do what you've called yourself to do. So the weight of your journey really ain't me, it's you. It looks like me because when you add it all together, I'm a part of all the junk that you have. But when you, when you lay aside the weight, come on, and you strip aside everything that's besetting you, you'll see for yourself how it feels. Amen? The devil doesn't want any of us to become free because once we're free, we'll know where the bondage really came from. Once you mix it all together, it's hard to tell who the problem is and who isn't. But once there's a separation, once you can see the sheep, come on, sir, and the goats, that's when you know the difference. Mm -mm. He says, here is the conclusion of the matter. All right, the last verse, I got three for each. So 1 Corinthians chapter 18, verse 21. Then Elijah stood in front of them and said, how much longer will you what? Waver. Hobbling between two opinions. That's what a rock is. He's like, look, pick one or the other. Stop staying in the middle. And here's where it gets deep. He said, if the Lord is God, follow him. 
But if Baal is God, then follow him. And what was the people's response? We still ain't sure. That's what a rock is in your minds when you can't make. And see, some of it is pride. You know why it's pride? Because if you make a decision and the decision was wrong, now your soul is affected. And your pride is affected because the decision you made was wrong. How about you make a decision if you're wrong, say, you know what, I was wrong. Next time I'll just make a better one. But instead of having conclusions, we want everything open-ended. You know what Satan, Satan didn't say Eve. He didn't say Eve. God didn't say Eve from the tree. He said Eve. Did God say Eve? He forced her mind to start making decisions that she wasn't ready to make and conclusions. And All right, let's go on. So, come on now. Here we go. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 13. We're talking about the soul now and how the rocks are in your soul. When I say rocks, I'm talking about dead weight. Dead weight in your heart. Dead weight in your mind. Dead weight in your soul. Stuff that doesn't belong there. Isaiah 14, verse 13. For you said to yourself, I will ascend to heaven. See that? You said to yourself, who is yourself? That's the soul part of you. I will ascend to heaven and set my throne above God's stars. I will preside on the mountain of the gods far away in the north. I will climb to the highest heavens and be like the most high. Now, of course, we know prophetically this was talking about Lucifer and Satan. But if you read scripture, he was saying and doing all this through men. He had possessed men. So, so it's the spirit behind it, and it's where one of the rocks come in, because here's what happened. Oh, I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there right now, and if I lose my church, I lose my church. I'm going to go there. Some pastors won't fellowship and do things together in the city unless their name is on the flyer, unless we're hosting the meeting. Unless I have five seconds to get up and greet them. See, sometimes you don't know what goes on behind the scenes. But you see, when you do things out of self, self always has to get the glory. That's why Satan's not just satisfied with you sinning. When Al-Qaeda and them do stuff, they're not just satisfied to see folk dying. They want to make sure they get the credit. We want you to know it was us. They want to make sure that they get the credit. And that's what we deal with in our soul. God is looking for people who can give a million dollars to the poor and not even say where it came from. And if you can't do that, you have some rocks in your soul. I'm going to go there. Some of y'all serve in church, not just y'all, people online or whatever. You serve in church, and we think you're doing something for God. No, if so, you can get accolades. You can get recognized. So folk can know you have something to do. And the Bible says if you do that, you got your reward right there. You don't get the award. And now, I told the Lord, I don't mind having some right here, man. I don't mind having some right here. I mean, I would. <laughs> but understand, when you do that, you forsake the eternal value because you want your name to be seen in lights. And, and that is Satan himself. Isn't that what he wants? He wants to be worshipped. He wants to be glorified. He wants to be uplifted. That's why he possesses and enters into so many musicians and singers and dancers and famous. Because anybody who's famous who are getting praise of people, he wants to be there so he can feel like he's getting praise. Why? I don't know. But that's what he does. What's wrong with him? I don't know. I just know we don't need him in our life. Amen? Amen. Amen. I don't know about you. I have enough problems without the devil. Amen? Amen. Okay. All right, I need to carry him too. First Samuel chapter 18. Do you know one of the movements in Satanism is the fact that they say that Satan is misunderstood? That's what they say. It's a part of, no, 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 he's misunderstood. And it's all, really, that's a big part of, no, he's misunderstood. And he's not the bad one. Jesus is the bad one. And Satan's the good one because he gives you freedom to do what you want. Really, I'm serious. That's the truth. That's what they believe. <clears throat> so let's get over this whole recognition thing. And once you explain yourself once, two, three times, that means those are people who count five, two, one. Just leave them alone. Amen? Yeah. Leave them. They will never figure it. They will never understand it's a four and a three. Amen? <laughs> you leave them alone. Amen? Stop worrying yourself. Amen? Really. Some, some of y'all are breaking your back. Try, the, you know, the Bible does talk about some folk who are called fools. And fools are people who don't care about wisdom. They don't care about understanding. So once you realize someone is a fool, you have to treat them differently. Not, not, not meanly or cruelly, but stop trying to speak logic. Are you following me? It's like going to someone who speaks a different language and say, do you understand me? Or no. Then you say, do. 
you. No, they don't know, they don't know English. Whether you say it loud or soft, it's not getting into them. And you're getting more mad, but you're the fool, not them. First, you're getting yourself frustrated. They don't speak English. First Samuel 18, here we go. When the victorious Israelite army was returning home after David had killed the Philistine, women from all the towns of Israel came out to meet King Saul. So they had good intentions. They sang and danced for joy with tambourines and cymbals. So pause here for a second. So this was shortly after David killed Goliath. A big moment, because when David did that, he freed all of the Israelite people, including Saul. Okay, it's a big deal, okay? And by the way, he did it under Saul's permission, under Saul's authority, amen? Okay. This was their song, so here's what the lady sang, okay? All right. I can imagine in vogue back in the day, singing like this, you know? Saul has killed his thousands, and David his ten thousands. I know y'all imagine it with me. This made Saul very angry. What's this, he said? They credit David with 10,000s and me with only 1,000. That's a soul issue. What does that say? What do they say about me? Me, 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 me. Not David saved us, but, but what about me? He says, next They'll be making him their king. Let me show you how twisted this is. So from that time on, Saul kept a jealous eye on David. Pause for a second. I want to jump over somewhere else, okay? To the third verse, and I'll come back to that. So Ephesians 4, 26 to 27, and then we'll come back to Saul and David. I want you to see something deep here. This is going to help you because they helped me. This is powerful. Ephesians 4, 26 to 27, in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. King James says, give no place to the devil. Now, pause here for a second. Remember we talked before about your mind, making your mind up, making decisions? And there was another verse that says, here's the conclusion of the matter. That means like in a court case, we had time to go back and forth. I heard your side. I heard their side. I heard everybody's side. Now I'm making my final decision. When things happen, God doesn't expect you to make a decision immediately, and he doesn't expect you to be all right with everything when it happens. But there is an appointed amount of time. And when you go past that time, what you are doing is you are giving place to the devil. And it says, do not let the sun go down on your anger. You can be angry for a moment, don't sin, and deal with it before the next day. Why? Let's see why here in Scripture. Let's go back. So 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 9. So from that time on, Saul kept a jealous eye on David. Verse 10. The very next day. Come on. I'm coming down for this. Because he didn't deal with it before the sun went down, what happened the very next day? What does it say? An evil spirit went into him. An evil spirit didn't go into him the moment he struggled. An evil spirit didn't go into him the same day. But because he violated the timing of God, he didn't deal with it that day. It was okay for him to be mad for the moment. Because like, like Rachel, his heart got hardened. He wouldn't let the Holy Spirit convict him. He allowed his feelings. Because I have the right to have these feelings. And God says, I have the right to allow a demon to enter into you. The next day, sun goes down on your right. Go to the next day. He did. And what happens? The very next day, a tormenting spirit from who? King, evil spirit. I, I, I was like, well, God, why did you send that? Why did you? It was confusing me. Now I see why. God said, I gave him an appointed time. But because he didn't have the metabolism to burn the calories, the rock remained. And therefore, his time to repent and get things right was gone. He said, but I did give him time. Somebody give God some praise. Come on. 
Look, y'all getting some good teaching on Beatty's Ford Road on this corner. I'm telling you. This is not, I'm telling you, this is, I didn't get this from no Jakes. This came from the Holy Spirit, amen? Nothing wrong with Jakes, I'm just saying. Y'all better realize God is speaking. Now, here's the sad part. Now we're going to be held accountable. <laughs> Myself included, Lord God. Mm-mm-mm. So the very next day, because he let the sun go down on his wrath and didn't get it right. A tormenting spirit from God overwhelmed Saul, and he began to rave in his house like a madman. David was playing the harp as he did each day, but Saul had a spear in his hand, and he suddenly hurled it at David, intending to pin him to the wall. But David escaped him twice. David, a real man of God, there will be no twice with me. Amen? He came back and played again. Like, wow, David, you... So Saul was then afraid of David, for the Lord was with David and had turned uh, away from Saul. Finally, Saul sent him away and appointed him commander over 1,000 men. Pause there for a second. Just because somebody promoted you doesn't mean they like you. Well, 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 pastor made me usher. He must like, you know, he made you an usher because he knows you're really supposed to be called to be an elder, but he's scared of your anointing, so he just gave you something to do. See, that's why if you don't know who you are in God, you can always be manipulated and duped. That's why the first prophecy you get about your life should come from the Holy Spirit speaking to you. When we prophesy to you from this pulpit, it really should just be a confirmation. If you're getting it here first, that's not a big problem. That just means you're not spending time with God. Well, Pastor, you hurt my feelings, but we're going to get you straight. Amen? If you ever had them gallstones or whatever, you don't want those things in you. Amen? I am flushing the stones out of your kidney. Somebody give God some praise. Okay. So he gives him a permission, gives him some authority, probably hoping he would get killed, right? Because remember, David used the same tactic later on, years later with... Bathsheba's husband, he might have learned it from his spiritual daddy somewhere in his, his DNA. Maybe he'll get killed while he's, okay, okay. But, but here's the problem. Because God was with him, David continued to succeed in everything he did. For the Lord was with him. When Saul recognizes, he became even more afraid of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David because he was so successful at leading his troops into battle. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Last verse. Or I already read the Ephesians verse. Okay, now we're on the spirit. Y'all with me? I posted it was going to be a long service, so I don't feel bad. Let's go. If you got to go, you can go. We're going to finish this. Galatians 5.25. You know what technology. You can turn the turkey off from right here on your phone. You can turn your, your, your stove off right now. <laughs> Galatians 5.25, now we're talking about rocks in your spirit. Not his spirit, but your spirit, okay? Since we are living by the spirit, let us follow the spirit's leading in every part of our lives. You see that? Since we're living by the spirit, let's follow the Holy Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. So if, if, if he's leading us, but you're too heavy... In your spirit, you can't follow his spirit. Remember what Elijah said? Woo. He said, you'll get the double portion if you can keep up with me. He said, if you are here with me, when the chariot comes and I'm taken up, you can have a double portion. But you got to keep up, son. You got to keep up. So his spirit is moving. and You, you are winded. It's because you got too many rocks in your spirit. Some of y'all are just trying to help too many people. Instead of focusing on what God called you. I'm going to prove it to you by scripture. Here we go. All right. So Acts chapter 1, 4 through 8. And don't feel lost. Just watch it later. Okay? Acts four, uh, 1, 4 through 8. Once when he was eating with them. Now this is now Jesus, right? He commanded them, <clears throat> do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised. As I told you before. 
Now here he's look, look, he died, he rose from the dead. This is now the buildup. This is now the last four seconds of the fourth quarter of the game, and you like four and one. Come on now. And, and, and you're down by five points. Jesus baptized with water. Sorry, John baptized with water. But in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they heard this, the apostle with Jesus, they asked him, okay, that's awesome. But who's going to win the election in 2024? Is, is it, is it going to be Trump or Biden? That's exactly what they asked. Look, what did it say? He's telling them. Here's the reason why I died, rose from the dead. John the Baptist, his head was taken off. We have the victory. I have all power. If you go to Jerusalem, you receive the Holy Spirit. They said, but when are you going to become governor? That's exactly what this says. Look, 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 look. It says it right here. He says, he says, so the apostles were with Jesus, and they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? This is where it gets powerful, because here's where some of us mess up. He replied, he he replied, I didn't come for that. See, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. Then he goes back to what he was called to do. See, see, I got to finish, but here's where we mess up, man. We mess up because we feel sorry for people. God is calling you to do one thing, and somebody over here says, but look, come help us. We need your help. You're so gifted. We'll give you a salary. We'll vote you in. We'll elect you. You know, you have this. You have, see, that's why you have to know who you are in God. Jesus could have become the governor. Do you think somebody wouldn't elect him because no one could kill him? He was already dead. Come on. Rose. He could turn water to wine. He could fix all the economical problems. But you see, that's not what his spirit was for. Christ means the anointed one. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Christos, the, so means he was anointed or he was given power, but anointing is not just random power, like electrical wires. like The anointing means you're empowered for a purpose, to do something. That's why when Peter said, you don't need to go to the cross, he said, get thee behind me, Satan, because that's the only reason I came here. And I have to focus my spirit, my heart, my mind, my body on fulfilling that one thing. And the reason why some of us are thrown off track, some of y'all, is because you have a heart that's too big. You want to help everybody. Come on now. And by doing that, sometimes you can miss your purpose. And by doing that, you might help some, but you're helping them in the flesh, not by the spirit. Because the spirit will only empower what God's will is. Somebody give God's All right, so um, all right, so let's go to Mark chapter six, verse one through five. I got a couple here on the spirit, and then we're rolling. Amen. See, I won't be here next Sunday, so I have to, I have to finish this for you guys today. All right, Mark six one through five. He went away from there and came to the hometown. Here's where it gets powerful. And his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue the same way he preached out of town. And many who heard him were astonished, just like the folk out of town, saying, where did this man get these things? What is the wisdom given to him? See, folk who clap for you don't mean they believe in you. How are such mighty works done in his hands? Is not this the carpenter? Oh, the son of Mary. The brother of James and Hoses and Judas and Simon. Mm. And are not these his sisters right here with us? And they took offense at him. Oh, this is just Bubba. This is just t- whatever you were before you got saved. Come on. Whatever you were back in the day before, they don't care if you got a PhD. They still remember you as the guy who picked your nose in class. They can't get past that, right? And now here's Bible. And Jesus, um, and Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own hometown and among his relatives and his own household. And here, here's the powerful verse. And he could do no mighty work there. Look, they were even able to block the son of God from doing mighty works, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people 
and heal them. That's all he could do. Now, now, now here, here's the lesson I want to tell you. Some of y'all, you would stay there and keep trying because it's your family. Wow. On, on, look, look, on the proud side, I'm, I'm going to show them. I'm going to prove to them I'm not, I'm not what I used to be, and I ain't no gangster no more, and, and I ain't no killer no more, and, and, and you're going to stay there and drain your anointing and get no results. For others of you, you care about them so much, you'd be willing to go to the cross for them, but the problem is you won't come back from that because you're not anointed to die nor to rise. Okay, so if Jesus understood the principle... Less, uh, some of y'all, it's not because there's something wrong with you. You're in the wrong city. You're ministering to the wrong people. Yeah. You take that anointing somewhere else. Yeah. There's some mu- musical artists in America that go nowhere. They go to Europe. Do it one more time. We like that. We like that. You know, we like to see you people jumping and singing. We like that. You pray for me. You have to find your audience. You have to find your audience. There might not be anything wrong with your song. You just haven't found your audience. Somebody give God some praise, man. Come on. See, when they come to arrest me next week, it'll be Wilburn here because I'm out of town. They'll get him. All right, so here we go. The the last verse I want to give you guys on this, on rocks in your spirit. Acts chapter 16, verse 6 through 8. Next, Paul and Silas traveled through the area of, uh, for whatever, and Galatia. Because the Holy Spirit, listen, the Holy Spirit had prevented them from preaching the word. Don't even sound like his Bible, does it? The Holy Spirit prevented them. But wait a minute, wait a minute. My name is on the docket. But you see, my cousin is over that church. I know I'm going to get a good offering. The Holy Spirit prevented them. But the Bible says preach to all creatures. But the Holy Spirit, so Paul understood that if whatever the reason is, I'm going to get my flesh out of it. I don't have anything to prove to anybody because my spirit is only going to be empowered when I obey the Lord. And even if that means he tells me not to preach today. Is it in your Bible or just mine? Come on. Then coming to the borders of Mycenae, they headed north for the province of Bithynia, but again, The spirit of Jesus did not allow them to go there. So instead, they went on through Mycenae to the seaport of Troas. Now, here's the problem. There was no gas card. Paul Paul would have been like, look, why you let me walk all the way up here to the border and then tell me not to go? You know what? It's none of your business. Why? You obey him. He's the master. You're the servant. Come on now. Really, really. And so when we do this, when we still press and do it, we still go and remember, remember when Saul was told, don't do the sacrifice, he went ahead and did it. The people rejoiced, but he lost his kingdom. We have rocks in our spirit sometimes when we overextend what we do for others beyond the calling of God. Yeah. Not just sin weakens your spirit, but doing great things and good things outside of God's will. Revived Church has been given an assignment by God to bring life to the city of Charlotte. As long as we do that, God's in it. When, when this, this local church is not doing that, God's not in it because that's the assignment. The spirit goes with the assignment. All right, the last one, we're almost done here. The body. Here are three scriptures to know if you're carrying too much weight in your body. Amen. I love, I did the body last. I think the Holy Spirit did that because many times we think about gaining weight. That's all we think about. We haven't even gotten to that. Amen? All right, so here we go. Matthew 4, 4. But Jesus told him, no, the scriptures say people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So when you feel like overeating, that's not going to fix the situation. Amen? I do it too. Come on, I'm not, I'm not judging you. I'm just saying it's not going to help. It makes it worse. Matthew six thirty three. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things shall be provided for you. So the things for your body, he'll provide that if you take care of things of the spirit first. 1 Corinthians 9, 27. But I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. Don't carry weight in your body. Don't carry weight in your flesh. Amen. Can somebody come take this podium away for me, please? All right. 
All right, praise God. We're almost done. All right. Today we are going to play a game, and I need five volunteers from the audience to come and stay on the stage. I need five of y'all. Come on. Five to come stay on the stage. Let's go. All right. One over there. Okay, one right here. You got to go over some more. And one right here, right here. One right there. Okay, uh -huh. and one right there. I need you to go over a little bit more that way. A little more this way. Okay, very little bit more. And then one right. Come a little bit closer, Ruby, this way. Very good. Okay. All right, give them a hand. <laughs> Y'all know in this church you might not want to volunteer to come do anything. So these are some bold people. People, okay? It's time to play, and y'all got to clap after I say this, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to play Where Do You Carry Your Weight? With your host, John Doss, with your host, John Doss. So I'm going to need some people from the audience to come up and participate. And so who would like to be my first contestant on Where Do You Carry Your Weight? Okay, come on, Justine. Give her a hand. So here's how the game is played. So uh, I need Sister Kaylee. Somebody find Kaylee because she has some signs that she made for me. Who, who has the signs? Oh, we have, okay, don't call Kaylee. We have the signs, okay? You, you have the signs, you sure? Okay, very good. So here we go. The first one right over here, uh, that's going to be uh, the heart. Too late now. You're on the stage. Put there you go. And the second one is going to be the mind. And the third one is going to be the soul. And the fourth one is going to be the spirit. And you got to fix your thing there. Yeah. And the last one, the last one is going to be the body. Give them a hand. Give them a hand. All right. All right. So our contestants today, you'll be given. All the way from the Palestinian borders of Israel, you'll be given three rocks. And what these rocks represent, they represent the weight that you feel when you suddenly receive unexpected news. Something has happened. Something has taken place. All of a sudden, these three rocks are thrown at you. Now, based upon the teaching today, and once I tell you what has taken place, you now have to go and place your three rocks in the three places where you carry your weight. And if you're really a certain type of person, you can put two in one place, and some of us are going to put all three. Let me tell you something. This is important because once we realize where we put our rocks, we can start to guard ourselves, and we can go through an exercise program to increase our metabolism so we can burn off that weight. But if you don't know where the weight is hiding, the devil wins. Come on now. And if you don't know where you overweight, the devil wins. Come on now. See, it's one thing to say I'm overweight, but when you break it down like this, the devil can't hide because you can weigh each part and see where the weight really is. Because when you're, when you're weighed down, doesn't everything hurt? Your body hurt. Come on now. Your body hurts, your mind. And, and all you know is, oh, I'm stressed out. Now, we're going to break it down to the five because when we can identify where it is, the Holy Spirit can go in and do surgery, and we can, we can change the way we live so we stop accumulating all this weight. So, Miss Justine, and I want to say as a pastor, I'm not speaking anything negative over your life. This stuff's not going to happen to you, okay? But I can't be nothing but real in Revive Church because we're going through real stuff. Anybody going through some real stuff? If you haven't, it's coming. So we need some real teaching for some real situations. Real, real devil, but it's a very much a real God too. Okay. There's a rumor out there that you might be losing your job. And the news came from a very reliable source. Where do you put your rocks? Little music. To them, honey. You can just. Okay. Oh, wow. Wow. 
Wow. Somebody give her, give, give her a hand for that. Wow. Wow. Now, 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 pause for a minute. Pretend like that was you. All right. Thank you, sir. Pretend like that was you and, and think, think, think about it. If you had just gotten that news, it's a rumor, but whatever, but it came from a reliable source and and where would you put those rocks? Where would some to eating? Cheesecake factory? Just I like a cheesecake. Oh, no, no, and not a slice. I want the whole thing. Some of us, oh, well, well you know, what, what are they saying about me? What, you, know, what, you know, who's taking my, look, look, not, not that you're getting fired. Who's taking my position? What's wrong with you? You're about to lose your job. And so who's going to take my, instead of applying for something else? Okay, all right, let me come grab these three. Give just another hand. Very good. All right, I need one more contestant. Wow, okay, well, okay. All right, and then look, and you're next, and you're next, right? And you get to go, and you get to go. Okay, here go your three rocks, okay. All right. You just found out that your spouse is cheating on you, and they have proof. Should have seen your face. Come on, give her a hand. Give her a hand. Give her a hand. All right, you can be seated. Now, now, what's, once again, I want you to realize these things are different for each one of us. That's why it's not a one-size-fits-all. Amen? All right, let me go ahead and grab these. Who's the next? We already have. Come on. Come on, Paris. Come on down. What I think is funny is contestants are still coming. That's what I think is funny. Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. Here go the rocks. I love it, yeah. Go ahead now. Come on down. All right. You just found out that something terrible has happened to a very close loved one. And no one is answering the phone. So you can't get any updates or information. Where do you put your rocks? Wow, wow, wow. Come on, somebody give God some praise. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Next contestant, come on down. Come on down. All right. And we only, we only have like two more of these, so we're almost there. Okay, all right. You just found out you might be losing your home because your spouse did not make the payment for the last three months and he spent the money on drugs and gambling. I thought she was going to walk that way. <laughs> like, <laughs> real rocks, you can't hit them. Come on, somebody give God, somebody give God some praise. Amen. All right, can I get the last contestant? One more, one more, one more. Come on down. Okay, all right, come on, come on, come on. No, come on, sir. You, you're the new guy. You get to go. All right. Go ahead and grab that. Bless you, sir. Okay, here we go. All right. You've just been told that your child's teacher has been molesting kids, and your child might be one of them. All right, let's give him a hand. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> now, 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 y'all must be some safe. Went off and hauled and punched nobody and cussed nobody out. Y'all, y'all, some amazing American people. I didn't give you. <laughs> I didn't give you enough rocks. Amen. See, I wanted you to think hard. That's why I didn't give you all five. But good, good. Okay, okay. All right, do me a favor. All the contestants, come back. Let's give them all a hand. Come on. Come back. Come on back. Come face the audience. Come on. Come on down. Face the audience. 
Line up right here and face the audience. Amen. We're about to close out here So One more thing for me. I want each of y'all to just get one rock apiece. Just one rock, one rock, one rock, one rock. Let me get two more. Let me get two more. Amen. Jesus rocks. All right, let's go. Come on, come on. All right, just, just one each here. If you can get this out. I don't know if you can get this out. All right, all right. Get one out of here. If I can do it fast enough, by the way. Let's give uh, Sister Kaylee made these rocks. Let's thank God, Sister Kaylee, in her busy schedule. So, so then, 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 then what is the best way? So the first thing, I mean, I, I want to close here, but I want to understand this, that, you know, we sometimes have to put these rocks in different places. Because to ignore it is not the answer either. But it's to know where it's going and then in, in a timely manner process. Get some counseling. Come on. Get some prayer. You're not the only one. See, the devil, devil's number one lie is you're the only one going through. Eve, you're the only one who want to eat the fruit. That's a lie because Adam ate it faster than she did. He didn't even have to go through temptation. He said, oh, yeah, I'll take some of that. So what do we do with this? How do we handle this? 1 Peter 5, 7 says, give all your worries and cares to God for he cares for you. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Then Jesus said, come on, Jesus. Then Jesus said, go give him your rocks. Come unto me, all of you who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Somebody give God some praise. Come on. Somebody give God some praise. Somebody give God some praise. He's worthy. Somebody give God some praise.